Thank you, Patrika. Uh, making AI real. Um, basic principles for how you operationalize AI is what I wanted to spend the next few minutes talking about. Um, let me take a minute to just set context and give you a sense of my background, where I'm coming from. Um, I have experience, um, started out my early journey in analytics, a lot of work with data technology, very large computational problems over multiple industries uh, in the last 20 years. Moved into more of PL responsibility roles in the last uh, decade or so. And uh, a lot of effort on turning around businesses, figuring out how to make money. My current role is with McDonald's. So as a global uh, officer with the company. Let's talk about AI and how do you make it real? So the first thing that I want to share with you is this perspective. We talk about AI all the time, but before AI, there is strategy and there is data. Um, let me illustrate this uh, with a very simple uh, story as follows. Let's take a typical um, B2C company um, where the marketing leadership, the executive leadership is talking about targeting marketing actions to customers. So as we know, uh, AI has taken off in a big way with CRM. So we could target marketing actions, leverage AI, and uh, there are so many articles out there about driving future growth in business, right? So it's a pretty standard story that you hear. And it's pretty compelling when you think about it, right? Well, the important thing to bear in mind when you look at this story is that AI is not in isolation by itself. So look at the schematic, right? You start always, before you talk about AI in my mind, you start with goals. You start with goals. What is it you're trying to solve for? Then you try to figure out What's your strategy by which you'll go from point A to point B, which is how will you get to those goals? Those strategies could have sub-strategies, there'll be tactics, and then there'll be work that you'll do. Historically, companies have done this for a long time. Um, there is data on different ways, shapes, and forms that is available. But in all cases, AI is an incomplete, is not a complete story without talking about goals and strategy and data need. In fact, I would say that data is a necessary condition for AI to work. Um, classic case, most uh, legacy systems in retail companies, uh, in distribution businesses, most legacy businesses do not have rich data. They've had to create over time the rich data that goes onto the websites, that goes in a public customer facing world. Typically, the transactional systems are set up with unstructured data. Think about things like descriptor, descriptors of part numbers, uh, descriptors of details of products. Um, you could leverage unsupervised learning against the unstructured and structured data elements, but it works a lot better, in my experience, when you augment that data. So better data is definitely a ne necessary condition. Not only is better data a necessary condition, it's also that you've got to have processes to enrich, interconnect. Having a massive customer master file is fantastic, but not having the ability to connect the customer key to your transactions file is really not very helpful. With AI, I would say an active effort to become data greedy is probably a really good effort that you want to engage in, in the first steps in your journey because over time, your AI will perform a lot better the more you take the approach of, hey, I wish I had this data available sooner than later. And it's not just about data, it's also about strategy. You could have all the data in the world, you could have all the AI capabilities in the world, but without a clear roadmap, without a clear definition of what actions you wanna take that you will leverage this data against, 
AI could just become another underperforming tactical tool. Remember, in most successful businesses today that have been around a long time, the business came first. It grew, it thrived, it became successful. AI came later. So there's a huge amount of work that needs to always be done when you implement AI-driven processes into integrating into the existing legacy processes, mindsets, capabilities that have historically built strategy and executed to action without leveraging AI. If AI is not enshrined in the DNA of these businesses, which is typically more the norm than anything else uh, for legacy companies, then assuming that everybody thinks breeds AI is a faulty assumption. So strategy data, critical, critical, necessary, sufficient conditions for successful AI. Let's talk about a second piece when we talk about making AI real. I call this the element of the domain specialist data science gap. And it's a real gap. Um, the gap is in terms of a common language, in terms of a common understanding, in terms of a common view, which leads to a gap in a common approach over time. So let me try to illustrate this with a couple of cartoons from Dilbert and then dive into a little more detail here. Take a look at this one. I love this cartoon. Um, I think we should build a SQL database. Uh-oh, does he understand what he said? Typical problem with a lot of top executives. They did not grow up in the world of AI. So what color do you want this database? Hmm, I wonder which color has the most RAM. Anybody that's data savvy in today's world, that's why the cartoon is the cartoon, knows that's a nonsensical conversation to have. And you'll be surprised how many times there are nonsensical conversations happening. Do we have actionable analytics from our big data? Again, another Dilbert cartoon. Yes. Whenever you learn new jargon, my productivity plunges. Plunge, 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 right? So the reality is that business is a social enterprise. The reality is that people talking AI are not just talking to other people talking AI. They are talking to other constituents and stakeholders in the business. Let's examine one of these stakeholders. Are we talking to each other? From a business leader's point of view, if you go to an executive and say, here's what I want to do with my AI, their question is, will this work? What are they really asking when they say, will this work? The core questions typically that somebody like me who's responsible for a PL would ask is, will I make money? That's what I'm interested in. This makes sense. After I hear you out, I might say that. What that typically means is, I'm saying, I trust you. As an executive, as a leader, I'm trusting you. Not that I understand the math that you just threw out at me or the complex terminology, but that I trust you. And when they say it's complex, what do they mean? From their perspectives, typically, it could be that this is way more than a spreadsheet could handle. That's complex. However, let's examine a different stakeholder in this process, the AI expert. How does the AI expert operate? If an AI expert hears the word, will this work? What do they interpret? They interpret it to mean, can I program a solution to solve this problem? A very different way of understanding the word, will it work? This makes sense. If an AI expert says that, hears that, has that discussion, they're really talking mostly about the code. It seems to work when I check it. It goes from point A to point B in the code and it's you know moving along the way I expect it. The output looks cool. This is complex. Complexity is not about spreadsheets. Complexity is for the experts is about the exciting perspective, the exciting possibilities that there could be a number of teams working many hours, bootcamp style. We could be having so much fun writing this solution. But let's throw in the third stakeholder here. You got business leaders, AI experts, and then you got the theoretical guys. Will this work? If I'm a theory guy and I'm coming from a math perspective, I would say, is there a mathematical solution to this problem? 
that I could find, not a coding solution, a mathematical solution. If I'm a theory person talking about marketing problems, I could be thinking about, is there a theoretical paper that has been published somewhere that I could leverage? This makes sense. This makes sense to me. It's elegant. It's like my PhD dissertation. It's very sensible. That's not what the other two are thinking. And this is complex for somebody coming from a math theory background. It's like the asymptotic properties of random evolutions, right? It's, it's, it's complex like that. How do I explain that to you in English? It is not something that is trivial. But right here, you see, you've got three groups at least that are just not talking to each other. And this happens again and again in companies. So how do you solve this kind of a problem? Well, the problem is that there is a gap between the different stakeholders. And what you're trying to do is figure out a way of connecting stakeholders so that they are united and marching towards a common purpose without anything slipping in these discussions, in these efforts. One of the ways that I've found that you can make progress at bridging this gap is through education. Um, educating the stakeholders. Yeah. I'll refer you to a book that uh, my co-author and I published, Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence in Marketing and Sales. It's an essential reference. It's how we look at it for practitioners and data scientists. It is positioned from this perspective, and I wanted to bring your attention to it because that's the kind of effort you've got to go through. How do you get the computer scientist talking to the market researcher, talking to the business leader? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort trying to build that bridge that gets them to talk to each other so that you are able to bridge the gap between the domain specialist who's talking a certain jargon and a data expert who's talking a different jargon. And they both are nodding their heads vigorously, but neither is really talking about the same thing. Can better education play a role, right? I believe it can. It can collect. And we don't probably spend enough work, enough time, at trying to connect the different stakeholders. So I've given you at the bottom of the page a, a, the Emerald uh, Publishers um, link. And if you want to, you're welcome to avail of a discount of 30% discount on purchasing by typing the code Emerald30. I uh, didn't want to do more than just call out the fact that there is, I believe, a huge need to be able to get to a common language and a common way of talking about it and understanding each other so that we could make better progress through AI. And the next point I want to touch on, on making AI real, look, it is important to keep in mind that often when you're talking AI, you're talking to the sell side. Who's the sell side? These are people whose job is to sell AI to you. So what you'll hear is a lot of promises, promises and hand waving. Remember, Successful AI is about not just the beauty of AI itself, but about the beauty of the outcome you're looking from it. Whenever you launch an AI journey, keep in mind, culture eats AI for breakfast. Let's examine the story a little bit more. For example, in a typical corporation, you've got legacy systems, the processes that don't connect most cases, You've got poor data muscle, I call poor data muscle because they didn't grow up in a data rich environment. And if they've been around for 30, 40, 50 years, there's a lot of data that is actually not sanitized, not, doesn't have hygiene, it's not connected, not understood, not leveraged, not utilized, et cetera, et cetera. And the skills and the work, works, workforce's aptitude for change is pretty limited. In an environment like that, if you were to come in and say, hey, you know this AI? It'll solve all your issues. I'd look at that and say, that's more like a solution looking for a problem because it's not necessary that AI will solve all your problems. There are some things that are required. Remember earlier I talked about data and strategy for AI to really work and become real for you. A lot of people have an exposure to AI through what they have seen in movies or what they have read. Uh, remember this, Elon Musk, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning that demon. If you haven't been through AI courses, haven't done work in AI, haven't written code and programs and done the actual math, all you've seen is a lot of 
stuff out there that may not be how you and I are talking about AI when we talk about CRM. We're not talking about unleashing a demon of any sort. So a lot of what you will encounter in this journey, I find, is that when you say, let's bring AI, the interpretation is dependent on the frame of reference of the person that you're talking to and where they sit in the value chain. If they are like a lot of executives that have been around successfully navigating um, the business strategy pre-AI, this might be their exposure to AI. You know, what they saw in Matrix, what they saw in the West world, like iRobot, right? That might be the exposure. You have to be able to step back and say, okay, AI typically is touching a very core domain around the data, around the tools, around the skill sets needed to do the analysis. But for this to work and to succeed, you cannot forget that this is about people. It's about process and technology, and it's about the mindset of the people you're working with to be able to go down a journey that you can change outcomes of a business, leveraging a capability. The capability is not the end in itself. The capability is something that allows you to get to the end in a much better way, more efficiently, more effectively. Bottom line, bottom line keep in mind that successful AI will require change. Making AI requires change in how businesses operate. It's not just about a machine and smart people and data. It's about changing behavior, changing mindset. Also remember, I said earlier, beware of the sales side. Beware of the sales side because at the end of each spending bonanza is a business that must pay its bill at some point of time. A lot of people will sell a lot of stories. If you're in the business of making money, you're not interested in the spending cycle as much as in the outcome cycle. So when you launch this journey, don't just think about the AI side. Be aware of the data side. Keep in mind there needs to be a clear strategy and a clear set of goals that you're solving for. And at the end of this all, you still need to bring about change management for this to succeed. Because without a change in mindset and how we do things, it's just the same stuff again and again with just some new tools that can give you some optimal outcomes. Thank you. That's all I wanted to share with you. If you want to look me up on LinkedIn, I've given my profile link. Uh, I'll be around for this conference. Happy to answer questions that anybody might have. Thanks a lot.